and welcome to the uh, first ever episode of Crash's Customs here on YouTube. A lot of people have known me uh, on Instagram as Crash Override, but we are coming in here with YouTube tutorials and how-tos on how to make some cool stuff with action figures and toys in general, sculpting, and that's kind of what I'm doing right here. <laughs> is, uh, we're making a Grim Reaper that will fit inside of a Hot Wheel. I saw this uh, game Gaslands and was really kind of excited with uh, the aesthetic of the game. It was really kind of a neat what they were doing with the Hot Wheels, so I wanted to kind of try it out. And uh, my buddy Toy Enthusiast over on Instagram had uh, given me a couple pointers, and I kind of just went and crashed it my own way. So here we are making a, an armature for the... Uh, skeleton which will be in this episode. The next episode is going to be actually doing the car. So this first episode is just making a miniature and a mini that will fit inside of a, uh, a Hot Wheels as like a little driver. This one's going to be a Grim Reaper. <clears throat> and you can see right here I'm doing the shoulders. I've got the body and the arms already set. It's basically uh, twisted a couple pieces of wire up and snipped the loop at the top and spread those out for the arms. And then um, I'm kind of just fighting with it right now to get the the main form of the body. And uh, I did a little bit of super glue and a little bit of tape around that body to kind of hold it together. You can see and we're fast forwarding now the fiddling. Uh, on the left hand side there you can see actually I wrote down the scale and I actually drew out how tall I kind of wanted him so that that would kind of give some reference. And after a little bit of fiddling and bending and twisting of these wires I'm using uh, 20 gauge aluminum wire right here I think it's a 20 gauge wire just you can pick it up at a Michaels any sort of craft store down the jewelry department uh, same for these pliers these pliers are actually really cool they're uh, they help you make little circles perfect circles and so that's kind of what I'm doing with the hands is the those pliers actually are uh, tapered in a really neat way so they don't look like they do much but when you actually have a pair it really helps and so here's the guy inside of the car and he's a little bit tall but that's just because I'm holding him and so once I've got the the armature in the pose that I want I start laying down some green stuff and the best part about this green stuff is that it's uh, sticky very 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 sticky actually in fact and I use a little bit of a Vaseline on my sculpting tool you can't see it but you'll see it later on in the videos I use a little uh, Vaseline on my hand and just kind of dab it onto the sculpting tool to help the tool not to stick to the green stuff. And uh, the green stuff sticks to the putty or sticks to the aluminum armature wire really well and allows you to kind of sculpt on top of it if you need to also with Sculpey even, which I do use Sculpey in this one here. Didn't really need to with the head, but you'll see that uh, later in this video. I'll show you kind of where I use the Sculpey. But right now I'm just kind of getting the basic forms of the hands and I'm actually just trying to kind of almost sculpt the hands like it is. Um, don't want to do too much sculpting over it because we're working on such a small scale that every little layer that you build up is going to make it look bigger and bigger and bigger so you want the proportions to be right and so I tried to get it as close as I can. And I also know that it's going to be a Grim Reaper so he's going to have a lot of draping clothes. And those clothes are going to be a lot more, uh, they're going to hide a lot of flaws, actually. And so here we are with the head, just uh, getting the head. I, I tend to add a lot of epoxy on, and then I kind of just cut off. And um, it's kind of the same with, same with the hands. I'm getting the basic forms out. Uh, this ends up actually looking like E.T. You can see right there a little bit of an E.T. profile. So my mind started wandering to aliens and E.T. and... I think I need to do an Aliens mini here soon, but it's for another day, obviously. And then I uh, have it in a cap, in a cup, uh, in, in a jar, actually. And so uh, I have cats, so the, the epoxy can cure without the cat hair getting on it and all that. And, you know, it just it protects it a little bit, putting it in that jar. And so now I've got some Sculpey Firm, and I'm just laying down the basic forms of the head. Uh, in hindsight, I probably could have used Procreate Epoxy, which I use later on. 
Uh, so if you're making a shopping list at home, you've got Sculpey, you've got green stuff, you've got 20 gauge aluminum armature wire, and you've got Procreate epoxy. Um, and so I'm kind of cutting down the jawline right here, just getting the basic form of the head. You can see I took a significant part of the jaw out there. And again, I'm not too concerned because I know that this is going to be a Grim Reaper. He's going to be covered up quite a bit with cloth. So I'm only concerned about what parts are going to be showing. And so you can see even the back of the head, I'm not even sculpting that. And so I'm taking a uh, sewing needle now. I actually clipped the end of a sewing needle. And so that's kind of how small that thing is that I'm working with. And just kind of dug in the eyes. I, I dotted them first to make sure I got them right. And I just kind of got in there and kind of dug it out. And I'm refining it just a little bit. In that cup, I have a little bit of a isopropyl alcohol. And so that helps smooth it out. But uh, that's all we really did here. I usually work in stages. So this stage is done. The epoxy had dried or, and then I sculpted. And now you can see after we bake the Sculpey of the head, he's ready for his next phase, which is going to be the uh, close of his cloak. And so there's the Vaseline that I was talking about. And this putty here that I'm going to be using is Procreate putty, which is a really neat putty because it you mix them together and it has like a, a saltwater taffy, very kind of taffy. I, that's the only word I can describe uh, the consistency of this. It's, it's a very taffy kind of, not really sticky, but very firm epoxy. Um, you know, working in this scale... I probably didn't need to do the, the head in Sculpey in hindsight. I The next time I do this, if I do this another Grim Reaper, I'm probably just going to make his head with this stuff right here, the Procreate Epoxy. And so for the sleeves, what I'm doing is I'm cutting a strip of a, this Procreate, and then um, I trimmed one of the ends to a triangle, so that's where you know the end of his uh, sleeve is going to go, and I'm making sure it sticks to his back, because the back is going to be covered up by the cloak. So again, I'm not too concerned with how that back looks because I'm just going to cover it up. But I do want to make sure that that sticks really well. And after you get it to stick, you can kind of strategically fold this Procreate in that I'm doing. Uh, just strategically folding it. When the Procreate touches each other, it does get a little bit sticky. But it's not super sticky on the cured epoxy or the wire. So... You've got some freedom to move. Just make sure that the Procreate doesn't touch itself or else it's going to kind of get a little bit sticky uh, to itself. But other than that, is you can kind of bend it and move it as you can see what I'm doing here. And I actually pulled it to make it a little bit thinner here towards the end. Um, but again, with the Reaper clothes, you know, they're going to be very baggy and a very loose-fitting robe. So this Procreate is pretty perfect for what we were going to be using it for. You can see there's uh, some folds there. I'm just working on getting the folds right. It takes a little bit of practice to have it bend in right and have the fabric lay the way that you want it to and make it look natural, give it some weight. Uh, we're coming back in for the other hand now. Speed it up, and since there was Procreate on his back, it was actually easy to tack it onto his back. You always want to make sure it's tacked onto his back there really well. And then you can start folding it in. Just make sure that where you push the Procreate, it's going to be kind of where you naturally want it to fold. You can see I did that right there, and I created a nice little fold around his elbow where it bends. I'm kind of pulling that sleeve to make it look like it's falling off of him a little bit, give it a little bit of weight. And I'm blending in the back there. The the Procreate and the Epoxies, I always have trouble blending them. They're a little bit more tougher to blend than a Sculpey, but uh, I did want to kind of lay that back down a little bit. And as I said before, I kind of work in stages because it's so tacky that the Procreate will, you know, if it touches a piece of uncured procreate is going to kind of stick to each other. So uh, with this one, I made it over a couple a couple days for the cloak. I just did the did the sleeves 
and then I kind of left those overnight to cure. You'll see kind of a, a lapse here. I'm just about done with the sleeves, so we bottle them up, and this is the next day after it's cured. Uh, once the procreate is cured, I kind of do the same thing as you cut out a little bit of a strip, except it's going to be a wider strip with a slit down the middle now. And that slit will kind of go over his head, so it'll look like a cloak draping over. And that's going to hide the lines uh, where you're kind of seeing the exposed wire. This cloak is going to kind of say that. And this is kind of a skeleton, so I didn't need to build that wire out. I kind of left it as is, and it just give it a really neat kind of emaciated look to the skeleton. So I'm, I'm very carefully kind of making sure that that's tacked down. You want to kind of push it on that back to make sure that it's tacked down. And then I'm pulling that procreate to thin it out a little bit. You can see that I'm just very carefully pulling it and then dra draping it down and around. And I'm in my mind, I'm thinking about how that fabric is going to drape. And I kind of am guiding it to drape how, I, you know, it would normally drape. Working on this scale, it can get a little bit difficult. As you can see, you know, some, some areas are harder to reach than others. But if you just work really slow and meticulously, you'll be able to kind of get it to flow just like you want it to. You can see there's a little bit of a triangle in the back but again I'm not too concerned with that because I'm going to be putting a hood over that and that hood's going to hide any of the flaws and what's missing on the back of his head and the back of his neck there. So I'm more focused on that front to make it look like a, an actual cloak is kind of draped and wrapped around him. You can see it kind of worked there and I'm just pushing it in a little bit more to kind of get it a little closer to that those wires and you know those wires are going to kind of act like bones so that it'll give it a little bit of weight it'll look like that cloth is actually sitting on something there and so now i'm cutting out a triangle that's going to be for the hood the hood i think was one of the more one of the pieces that took me a little bit longer just because it's almost a center focal point so at the top of the head, you want to make sure that you tack it down. And so I tapped it down at the top of his head to make sure that would stick. And then once that's stuck, I can start manipulating the sides. And so you can see I kind of pulled them quite a bit to thin them out. This procreates really neat stuff. It, it, it looks just like fabric, and you can kind of drape it the right way for these minis and it works really well so I'm kind of very carefully just thinking about how I want this hood to lay on the Grim Reaper and in this scale it's like every little move counts you want to be very tactical at this point because you know slow and steady so that hood is a is a main focal point you can see I actually tore a little bit there but um, Again, this is a Grim Reaper. He's not going to be perfect, so a little bit of tearing may be okay. Uh, I actually fold it in a little bit and blend that later. That On his left, that left flap of the hood gave me some issues. I still am not sure if it looks the best, but we got it to work. And so I'm kind of slowly draping it down and just guiding it down without really tacking it in. And once I get it to where I like it, right there, you can see that I tacked it and kind of stuck it in there. And then once you stick that side piece down, you can kind of push in. And it's going to kind of come in around the skull. So you can see right there, pushing it in a little bit and forming it around. And while I'm doing this, it's kind of creating some neat wrinkles that look just like normally would. You see right there, you've got a couple of wrinkles, but then I bring it up and I, I push that hole in there a little bit, just a little bit. That is, for the most part, the Reaper hood, and he's all clothed right about now. So after this part, 
I actually, uh, I made a little bit of a skirt for him. Because I wasn't exactly sure how he was going to fit, uh, how deep he was going to fit into the car. So I figured, you know, I had some extra epoxy. Why not make a little skirt around to cover up some of those wires? But in hindsight, I really didn't need to because I, I cut quite a bit down on his torso to get him into the car. Which you'll see probably in the, in the next video here. So after uh, another day of waiting overnight, this epoxy is cured, and so we're starting to paint now. And uh, painting a Grim Reaper mini is actually relatively easy. I start out with a black base coat, and then uh, I really only come in with some highlighted whites on his face and drew a couple lines on his hands, and then we dry brush the... Uh, overall cloak and I I didn't go a straight gray or a white dry brush actually you'll see kind of what I did I actually added some blue into the dry brush just to give it a little bit more depth I think a gray dry brush is just kind of boring and so adding a little blue just give it gives it a little bit more depth and character but here I am coming in on the white and I'm very careful about how much white I have on my paintbrush my paintbrush is fairly dry right about now uh, I just want to kind of get a gauge of what he's going to look like and so I start out very light and then I build in the colors as I go because I'd rather have you know too little instead of throw a blob in there and have too much so you don't want to you don't want to have too little or you want to have too little you don't want to have too much uh, you can see that I kind of liked where it was going and so I'm kind of coming in here with more colors now and I'm being a little bit more deliberate with the white and bringing it in and he actually turned out looking like a Star Wars character you can see right there if you know the Star Wars character comment below I'm pretty sure you'll be able to figure that out and now we're gonna, gonna come in with the hands and the hands were really hidden and again this guy's gonna be inside of a Hot Wheel car so I knew that I didn't need much detail uh, a little bit of white would be at best all they could see so I just I, I threw a couple white lines and I wasn't really too concerned because I'm I know that inside this, this car you're, you're gonna probably barely see the Reaper alone <laughs> so here I am making the wash I've got a gray and a blue and then the white that was left over from painting the face I kind of kept that and we mixed it all together and it, it actually turned it out uh, a little too gray for me so I added a little more blue and a little bit more white and after that that looked a lot better he still still keeps that 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 gray tone but you know the little bit of blue just adds some depth to it uh, now what we're doing is with the same brush that I painted I'm just gonna slap on some blue and again this is a one of those areas where I start out really light and I kind of work in deeper highlights when I need to so I usually do a couple layers of uh, dry brushing myself so this is kind of a darker dry brush as my underbrush and then you can see I come in with a white here a little bit more and I lighten up that same blue that I was using and I use it around the edges there so that his you know cloak will stand out a little bit more and, and in certain areas I actually do and actually I think I messed up on this a little bit and had to come back in with some black paint to right around his left arm you can see it as I'm spinning it I kind of sped this up wasn't too exciting just dry brushing the uh, Grim Reaper there there I am touching up the black while I had the black I kind of dotted the eyes to make sure that the eyes were super dark and that is the Grim Reaper so that's the first uh, the first step of our Gaslands car the next video we'll get into uh, actually making the car itself but until then hope you enjoyed this little video it'll be a learning experience for me so the next one's going to be better the video after that's going to be even better and these are all going to get better but uh here's one of the images a couple images that i took and posted on instagram and there he is in the car that we'll go into details later 